Hello guys, it's Rosa Hart. I heard in my bedroom. Hmm. And then to make things worse, I end up having that dream. Mother, you are the only one I can trust, right? I slowly fly out of my bed and make my way to my dresser. The light, the little bag is still where I left it last night. I open it and let a little white chocolate lily fall into my hand. Wow, that's very detailed white chocolate. Is he really trying to help me? I remember his face yesterday and his bright smile is very present this to me. I slowly run my fingers across the detailed white petals. He couldn't have known lilies were my favorite flower. There's no reason to be suspicious about something like this. It's just silly. I put. I am about to put the flower back in the bag, but I stop if I eat it more once. Slowly, I begin to br bite my lips, buying a small piece of the small petal. It's actually pretty good. I stuff the little flower back into the bag and make my way downstairs. Man, that is a detailed flower. The Martian is not busy this early in the morning, but everyone is sitting on their, st starting their chores. At least I assume as much when I see Alice and then Walson, who is helping her stack things. Then I hear a raising fo rising voice, and I realize that not all is calm. At least I am. Don't have to pretend to be someone I'm not. Oh. <laughs> Hi, couple. How are you two doing? You make the best ship ever. You say you're not pretending when you go around flirting with all the, the female friends day in and day out. You can't seriously mean all of that to five you spout. Harmon and Rico Stan Rumple Rico. So I was watching Kingdom Hearts. Stand on opposite sides of a table, staring each other down. A tea cup fills with what looks like to be cooling tea sits close to Kara. Abandoned. Flirting with a lady is not a crime. One day your flirt is going to get you into even more trouble than it already has. I never had a lady said I mistreated her, not once. Oh, I'm sure many could attend to be more than silly and annoying since. You're only jealous that I can speak to the ladies without a direction, ain't ya? Slam his hand down on the table and smacked it. Then grows quiet. Watson looks up, his eyes firm with a worry. If so much as make one more comment about my curse, then stop making conversations about how I speak. The two continue to glare at each other. It's almost like as Karma might circle the table and slap him, but the fight freezes as Jill stirs up to the two men. It's too early for the two of you already be at each other's throat. Aw, don't start them. They're true lovers. They'll realize it at the end of this. But he started it. You know, ignore him, then. All I did is make a comment, and he, the one that picked a fight. There you go again, twisting words. Joe stomps on the ground. The two men once again look to her. My job is to break unnecessary fight, and I will do it. If you two must continue fighting, do it somewhere else, like the fort, where you can't disturb anyone. Both the men turn away from each other and obviously angry. Rumble is sent in cloud as he makes his way over to the bar to being helpful to set the tables. Jun knows me watching. She waves 
at me with a tense smile on her face. Sorry you had to wake up to that, princess. I shrugged as I made my way over to Mr. Broom. It's like waking up to two children arguing. Agreed, wholeheartedly. Jill sighs and before looking at me thoroughly. Maybe you could have a word with Rumpel later. I had no idea how their argument even started, but maybe you can get to the bottom of it. I'm not a babysitter. But I heard the two of you were partners. <sighs> anyway, hopefully this does not happen again. Good luck with your work today, princess. Joe walks off and... As always, I noticed Jack looking at her from the bar, a slight frown on his face. I start working around the turn, starting first when, with the clean and then with the stacking. Dora makes a sense remark about me slow this at, as I work. I tried my best to ignore her. Why? Can I throw her issues back at her? If it was... It is as if she is, has nothing better to do. The door to the travel opened and Perufio steps inside with a bright smile. She looks more ready than usual. I wonder if this is because of Rumpel's medicine suggestions. Later I managed to catch Rumpel when the two of us are both on a break. He looked pause to see me, pleasant to see me until I mentioned karma. Why are the two of you fighting early? What what a sad face. Sad day. It has is that the princess talks about another man to my face. Just answer me. I'm getting ready for the event for today as always. Speaking of to the lovely women who flatter in and out of this place. When the best Beast approached me. He's a sin out of drama. Your flooring is disgust disturbing me, he poor god. Well, you flirt is, is annoying. But all I'm doing is complimenting women. I'm not praying anyone's work. I am though. I know that the reason he called me out such a thing was because he's actually jealous. You know. Have you seen the skull on his face? And here we go. So, I politely told him to mind his own business, but he was reckless, and when he continued to insult my germ, well, I had to say something back, but it wasn't the one who started the fight. I swear, the both of you really do sound like children. No doubt, Karma would be blaming Rumpel. Princess, you don't really think I am so confident, do you? I think Karma is far more confident than Rumple, but it does not help that Rumple always snaps back at him. The two of you are both at fault. But princess! In the end, you were still having a child's childish argument. I think that Rumple might try to protest again, and am I surprised when he shrugged his shoulders and sighed? Yes, it was childish. Because that man is a child. So are you. I roll my eyes. Ah, your own scrolls chills my heart. Princess, I feel a tang of suffering. I'm leaving now. There's no really no point in having this conversation. It is a problem between Karma and Rumple. They aren't children. They can figure it out on their own. Oh, princess of my heart. Why must you depart so early? Ignore Ropel and leave him staying there when he and I return to my shift a little early. Honestly, I would ha ha would much rather focus on work than Rumpel. He can be just as tiring, if not m more. Though, after what happened last night, I do not think he is as terrible as I thought. Those days go on, Rumpel and I speak only briefly during breaks. 
Every day I eat another piece of the lily until one only one remains. One afternoon, just before my break, Rumpel appears to me with a immense smile on his face. My lovely princess, princess, how are you today? What do you mean? Your cold sh shoulder is entering. I have one more table to serve. Do not bother me. But princess, I say I know exactly how to teach you to be good. All of your lessons have been useless so far. Please, just trust me. To put faith, my trust in someone is weak. I'm going to teach you how to flirt. Bravo. Rumple, you have gone down the rabbit hole. Hi. What? The first step to flirt is eye contact, princess. Uh, all right, wait, but why are you? Rumple points at a customer, a young man sitting be right beside the window. The second is to smile. Smile, princess, because I'm sure you look even more stunning when you do. Then you start a conversation with him. My language is important. There are certain signals that a key man into the fact that a woman is interested in them. I think playing with your hair is one. A gentle tap on his shoulder is another. I should have expected Rumpel to spot out this n sort of nonsense. Um, Princess, the customer's been waiting for a while. Is something wrong? I noticed the customer looked at me and said, He is just some other man and a usual customer that I see often. Oh, pr and Princess, don't forget the, the compliments. Make sure them as direct and in as you can. I move away from him before he can mumble my thoughts any farther, or my feet feel like lead. I find myself staring at the man for far away too long. The way he stares back at me, his expression so unread, suddenly makes me feel more uncomfortable. Do I really have to do what Wolf well, well says? I stop in front of the man and set down the tray, my eyes still on him. I do not have fall. Oh, I don't have to follow up with advice, but for some reason my lips quickly smile up my lips through the last uh, second. Are you okay? Attempt to flirt? Uh, good luck! I can feel a ruffle smile at my back. If we were anyone else but him, I would have. It would have some kind of prank. But conversation is the way Rumpel acts all the time. Maybe he's really trying to help me. I try to reveal how he flirts with the customers before. I, I, I couldn't not help notice you were alone. Beep bop boop. <laughs> I'm always alone. My heart thumps far too loudly in my chest. What kinds of things do Rumpel usually say? Madam... You are the most beautiful thief I have ever met, for it's who stole my heart and gave my guess. Your eyes are more capable than the stars, my sweet. If I could just stare at them forever, I'd lose myself in their mystery. You remind me of the rose and with thorns, but the thrones are what make you rose so action. All he does is spout comforting gun. I'll try to do the same. How is it that you would always be alone when you have such lovely eyes? The customer stares at me briefly. I focus myself to continue. Your eyes remind me of leaves falling. They flatter between the gaze of the sun and, uh... I stop the words, nothing more than a lie, making me feel strangely hollow. The man is staring at me, but he looks uncomfortable. Still, I do not think he is anywhere near... As uncomfortable as I am. Madam? Perhaps you would. Oh, my voice throws off. I bite my lip so hard I can taste some men. The man's fresh is a mix of awe and prayer. I may turn away from him and walk off. The whole face is hot and I can feel angry bubbling up down inside me. Ah, princess! Leave me alone. 
Princess, we're not done. I do not care. I ignore everyone's gaze as I make my way quickly as I possible up the stairs to my room. There, I collapse on my bed, laying with my arms stretched out. Why would I have even th thought of taking Rumpel's advice? Hours go by, and eventually I realize that time helped Alan with night chores. Now I am helping her restock some of the balls that Walson and Carmen brought from town. I hope Anne does not mention what happened earlier today. I slip out of bed and head down to the main area to try. The room is mostly quiet by the time I go to sound stairs. Perfume and Delore are taking time other at the table. Carm has me by as walking downstairs. He looked exhausted and oddly frightened. I made my way over to Anne, who is already putting bottles on the shelves. Oh, Princess, you are you okay now? I'm fine. Now, what did you need me to do? Anne's expressions how restock works. She shows me the labels on the shelves and explains the empty spots are where they need to go, bottles go. It is not a hard job and one I can easily do without thinking too hard. For a while, the only sound that can be heard in the Martian are the bottles clicking together each other. Unbreathing that is murmuring between Perfume and Delorium. I have no idea what they are talking about. They are sh look serious, so it must be something important. Um, so Princess, can I ask you what life was at the palace? Right. She really can't remember working the palace before. I don't mean to pride. I was just trying to make conversation. I'd rather not. Oh, okay. I finish the peripheral and doors stand from their seats and move another room to continue their conversation. Unbreaks the silence again. The turn is nice when it's quiet like this, isn't it? You can hear the sounds outside if you open the window. Her hands move slightly, placing the balls on the shelf by the label. All I want to do is get the work done and then return my room. It was like this at the old place that I used to work. To work, I was hired by a rich family to be their maid. The mansion was beautiful in place. You could hear the crack of leaves in the willows on the, oh, on the bottom floor. It seems like her memory has been twisted by my curse. She, she can't remember fully working at power. All she remembers is working for a rich family. It was a nice place, princess. There was a girl close to my age that had a radiant smile. Radiant smile. She must be talking about him. The head of the mansion is really kind man, and she goes quietly silent. I look at her confused. Aww. Coming to her face, she paused and then shakes her head. I can't seem to remember every one that was there, but I'm pretty sure they all were good people. At least, I like to think so. I was just a bad maid. She was, because of her, Delorean's dress was torn. I was too ashamed to tell one of the mistress that I could not save her doll. Hmm? Save her doll? I always looked down her smile went. I was fired on the first day because I couldn't save one of the Mr. Stalls. It was the one who cleans her sleeve that day. When I went in, I saw a crow that came through the open window and was pecking at her one of her dresses. I sewed it away, but it was too late. The doll had a little rip in its dress and I was fired for not doing my job properly. So it wasn't Anne who ripped the Delorean's dress, but a bird. Is that why Delorean sets Anne's sanity of the apologies? What happened after you were fired? Labor if you found me on the streets. I couldn't go back to my aunt's house. Not after what happened. She never liked me anyway. Anne's face cloud brief with sorrow, but especially short lived. I never, I can never forget that day I met Lady Perfume. I told her I would be able to help her and anyone else that got sick. 
than I can ever do all cook since I make meals for my father since I was young. I begged her to take me in, and she did. I owe Lady Peripheral a lot. Why didn't you go to your father's after you were fired? My father passed away a while ago. Mother died giving birth to me. My father was a herbalist, and he taught me a lot while he was still with me. So, before Rumpel came in, I helped Lady Peripheral with arms for us. So you have no one. That's what I thought, but now I have everyone here. The Martian is my family now. Family? Princess, we are we all happy to have you here. You really don't help out around the Martians. I can tell Rumpel happy to have you as a partner. My memory of what happened today slowly sleeps slips back into my mind. I cannot help help then bubble up inside me. I know he's a little overwhelming, but I'm pretty sure Rumple really tried to help you. But just like he's helped Lay Peripheral, it's not the same thing at all. The two of us continue working until M makes another wishful combat. The place I worked before this? I feel like there was warmth in that garden home, but it was suffocating palace isn't warm at all. I speak the words without re even meaning to. Alice looked at me curiously. The king surely speaks of spe start speaking to me when mother died, but he never, but it was never enough. Before he could, he was cold and distant, and even now, he favors his new wife, children over me. These were people but they all were fake smiles, and my father, he was the worst of all. I made as well, never assisted to him. Princess, I'm sorry. For what? You're talking about the palace, right? The king always seems so nice. He puts his kingdom before his children. Iron figures nervously. I'm sorry. Policies are not going to change the past. Sometimes apologies seem like all we can do when we cannot change something that's already happened. I think about Alice who tried to save my dolls and the way I fired her that day. Rumble told me once that all I could do was listen to people sympathize with him. Could that also be true for finding out the truth? All I can do is make up what for her. I'm gonna apologize. I'm sorry. Ann looked at me, clearly shocked. She stares at me for a few moments before I scare out at her. Staring is rude. Oh, I was just... Why are you apologizing to me, princess? It is for something I did that you would not remember. That I would not remember. You should tell me. I promise that I won't hold it against you. It is not important. Alice's eyes are sitting down, Clarence. And no matter her attempt, she smiles bright as once again. I quickly finished snacking the bottle swallowing one shelf. I am done. Un turns to me with a usual tired expression on her face. Thank you for listening to me, Princess, and for telling me a little bit about yourself. I feel like I think I might have said too much. I do not respond to Al, but instead choose to head out to the front door. Al asked where I was going, but I just ignored her. I think about heading to town, but then regard, I decided to head to the forest instead. I made my way to the forest, clearing in the dark. Everything feels a lot comfortable here. I do not have her to listen to anyone. I do not have to talk about myself. I sit down on a rock and stand, stare up at the sky. I apologize, but Alice did not even understand my apology. And even now, I still cannot bring myself to trust those at the Martian. I sigh and find myself speaking aloud. Maybe I am the Ice Princess. Ah, but you have seen the beauty of Sifin. That can make from the Ice Princess. Rumple. I turn to see Rumple walking towards me, a bored grin on his face. Ice Princess, 
sparkle in the sun. I glint and stand so proudly when it been sun. I stare at Rumpel blankly. He sighs and shakes his head. I'm sorry. That one was pretty bad, wasn't it? He sat down beside me and his grinned face a little bit. I have no white lilies to give you this time, my sweet princess, but I will offer another er uh, oh, would you need for me to all apologize for my advice earlier today? I offered I can offer you anything, my words, my body. I cut rumple off it. I'm not in the mood to his usual behavior. You're always like this. I, all you ever do is flirt. Any mentioned thing you try to say is lost in the flirting your conversation giving to people. It is shallow. You are right. What? I stare at Ruppel is smiling, but it's not the same current grin he wore earlier. Somewhere deep in my memories, I remember someone telling me off just like that. Many people enjoy flirting, Princess, and a lot of people are very young to flirting. But nothing can mention up to genuine compliment. But I stand by what I said before, and making people happy is a good deed. Look, I'll show you. I will shift off so that he can look right at me and I notice that his smile is gone. Rose, of all the women I've met, you are the most straightforward and honest. May, may do not have the courage or the correction to send those quarrels. And that's why I admire you. You, and why I always take your words so hard. Because I know you always speak the truth. I look her up with eyes, which is still genuinely soon. <coughs> <coughs> The darkness. For a few moments, this word flowed around in my head. No one has ever called me blunt, honest before, and no one has ever complimented me for it. Rumble told me before that I deserve to be spoiled. Maybe it's because he sees the thing I do more passion light. My, my, you're fun speechless by that, aren't you? You look cute when your cheeks are so rosy. My sweet princess. I glare at him and Rumpel just laughs in response. I put my hand to my cheek, sighing self confident. Rumpel smiles at me, but it's not the usual playful smile. Right now, he almost looks serious. Did he mean what he just said? Did you mean that compliment? Of course I did. I told you, right? Making a person happy is a good deed. I wanted to show you that. Rumble's comments do make people happy, even if I do find his words very swallow. But that, that feels different. Flattery is wonderful, but it's usually the only kind of compliments a woman friend appears. Though I do not that real well, don't I? Earlier, I bet you made a Alice and happy too. You're spying on our conversation. I would never. Uh huh. I just happened to make it. It my way downstairs very slowly. So you were spying. You don't even know what I was apologizing for. No. But I thought you had after. I had to. You had to after you listened to her, didn't you? I listen far more than you do. Princess, you shattered my heart so many times. There are practically, practically cracks. Yeah, I probably do. But don't worry. The cracks in my heart always allow me more of you to make your, your way into it. What? Is that a compliment or a flirt? You flirt with me. Rumble always laughs when I remain silent. Anyway, 
There are different kinds of listening, princess. Listening sympathizing is one kind. Trying to put your yourself in someone's shoes, trying to understand them. That is the one of, of those ways. There, there is the kind of listening that is shallow, one pretending to listen without even letting the word into their hearts. Words are flickering things. Mother always told me that people lied, that they would say it, whatever benefits them. It is foolish to trust words. What if Anne had been lying to me? Why would I put so much blindness, faith in people? Because more often than not, people are good people. Good, Rose, princess. Let out a, I let out a, a, a sauce and sigh. Sometimes I cannot tell if I'm angry or confused by Rumple. Ah, what a beautiful sound. It was sweet when itself was gentle tickling my ear. I sigh away from him in school. Your skull is adorable, and you're such delicate lips. Stay away from me. Right. I'm still convinced that earlier comfort was just a lie. How could he, someone generally, then slip right back into a pitiful flirting? For a moment, sudden falls, and I find myself surprised that it's not awkward being alone with Rumpel. Will you accept my apologies from early? I promise I will not try to get you to flirt with anyone ever again. Yell yes. Besides, if you flirt with another man and then get really fond of him, I would be devastated. That would never happen. You don't let me finish. I was going to say that I would be devastated because that would mean that your heart belongs to someone else. And my heart belongs to no one. I will steal it like a thief in the night. Ah, he's so up forward of his feelings. That would also never happen. Or he's not up for flirting with me for no reason. If not that, then I will sell for making you smile at least once, because I'm sure you're, you you shine as brightly as the sun if you smile. You are unpleasant. Love is passion, ever, princess. A man in love stops at nothing, winning over the woman that he adores. Then you must be in love with many women. I would be as skeptical as him. You. Ouch. I sat up. I would appreciate you just complimenting me when you mean it. But princess, I mean every one of my compliments. I have no energy to change him right now, but at least I have no longer have the argument anger inside me from earlier. It's been a long day. I'm going to bed. Would you like company? No. Good thought. I didn't mean good night, Rumpel. Uh, good night, Princess Rose. Let me ignore that I said anything. I made my way back to Trump, feeling surprisingly light. Still, even if Rumpel Force might me happier than I care to admit, he is not doing a very good job of helping me with my curse. No, he's not. I might have to do things my own way after all. Yeah, he's doing a horrible job at that, isn't he? What a bright day! The sun is shining, the town is full of laughter, and I, my sweet princess, here's the company. Rumple, I'm sorry, but when you said the sun is shining, my first thoughts went to Undertale. The sun is. Sh the birds are singing. And. Man, I don't know the whole line by heart. That's sad. I could not help but groan at Rumple's operation because we are both sent to run errands. 
because everyone thinks we would make a wonderful couple. No, I think you and and Karma would make the best couple. Wonderful couples. Rumpel would hate me. No, because we are partners. Partners, a couple, it may well be the same thing. No, you're Karma's boy. Half of the time, Rumpel says some deep things, but then he says things like that. It's like he's two personalities. No, it's not the same at all. I take out the list and scroll, scroll at it for a few things we need to buy. More than half of it's already crossed out. I glance at the bag Rumpels is carrying. He refused to let me carry any of them. Insists that it would be impolite to force the load on me. Aw, Karma C, you make a perf- Karma, we found you the perfect mate. Rumble would carry all the bags for you. That leaves me with the list duties. This is more laid back than what I do at the Martian. Okay, now we have to get a medicine. Restart for Anne. My area of X is very Never fear, my sweet princess. I will find everything we need. We already have a list. But Rumpel just hums and saying, as he continues on our way. I'm not certain if he heard me or not. We arrive at a little messy shop in the sun plaza. A man exits through the front door, coughing so loud the people turn their heads to stare at him. I wait for the man to pass but so that he, I can open the door or to the shop. But then I notice that Rumpel hasn't budged budge beside me at all. His eyes do a quick scan of the man before he slowly begins to walk towards him. Sir, are you sick? Eh? What is it to you? Even if I'm sick, lad, there's nothing I can do if I haven't had any money. Besides, it's not like it, this will kill me. It's just a cough. How long have you been coughing, sir? It seems like such a merry thing, but Rumpel's son looks so serious about it. He looks at the man with his eyes sliding there as if he tries to pass, see past him. It's been with me for more than three days. Coughing are pexy things, aren't they? They are such the last thing to go, but at least they are not deadly most of the time. Even if you, can, you, if you can't buy any medicine, sir, there are other at home, revs me. That might help with your cough. Boy, I already tried warm tea. My wife gives me, th me enough of that. Water is good for your throat, too, sir. Any kind of steam works, too. If you the cough is run up with muscle, it'd be easier to stress with steam. When you can't afford any medicine, sometimes the simple things will help. And a cough stays for a while. So don't fright if you can't get rid of it of yours immediately. Well, I appreciate the advice. Not exactly what a doctor would tell me, but I'll ha have to do. The man thanks Rumpel before walking off, and I notice Rumpel looking down the ground. A very fun expression on his face. Is that he what he said true? About what, princess? About doctors not giving advice about home remedies. Most of the doctors do not believe in such things. They always think that medicine works better than at home or revelry stuff. The medicine do not help. The medicine do help, but some of them aren't necessary. Yet you just give him advice. Not everything can be for herbal medicine. Because a doctor means helping people, not taking advice of their sick lives to steal their money. Money has never a problem at the palace. Whatever I was sick, the palace staff made sure I had the best of the fact measurements. Do you remember what you were like as a doctor? I wanted to help everyone that showed up at my door. Sometimes I can't and it frustrated me. 
I ran medicine when it was necessary, giving advice other times and when things were dim, I burned small enemies. He does seem a lot more serious when he talks about health. Rumble was silent for a few moments before his eyes lighted up once again. Anyway, should we stock up on our medicine? I thought you said medicine wasn't always helpful. Because it's not. But I also know that I use mostly herbs, and that she tries to handle things without too much medicine. She's quite capable. We entered the shop in no time. Rumple spots won't die them on the list. We use the rest of the money to buy them as it remains. And then we need. Need. And then we are able to head back to the throne. On our way there, Rumble sticks up a conversation again. So, princess, have you got any thought to what I said before? About what? You already forgot about making people happy. What? You know, you could make me happy, right? And now, by giving me a kiss on my cheek. No. I stare blinking at him before walking off. No, thank you. And my hopes are d dashed away. When we were at the outside of town, I paused and turned around, as if I can feel something on my back, eyes on my back. But I'd seen anyone openly staring at me. Is someone watching me? Surely, I felt warm in my hands. Then the finger in through my mind. Rumples pulls me a little closer, his best is oddly gentle. Don't worry. My sweet princess, you're safe with me. Surely, his face is a lot closer to mine, and I can see his features more closely. It's like the night in the forest, especially his face is not mirrored by the same shadows. This is more kind eyes, but I'm not done at me. Did you see someone following you? Uh, no. No, I just felt someone looking at me. Better stay together then. Begin to walk again. The two of us begin to head back to Marshall. Rubble has all the bags in one hand. He hums a little as a bit as we walk. It remains peaceful so much. I don't even mind him holding my hand. It suddenly feels a lot safer. I am so lost in relief that I do not even notice when we turn and go back in the opposite direction. This is not the way the back to Martian. On the contrary, it's more sudden pass. Don't you like the forest, princess? The staff of light come through here. A careful. The soft balance of the grass tickle your ankles. It's a, such a romantic place. No matter what he says, does not lead back to Martian. It's not sudden path or a path at all. Uh, I may root myself in place, and even though Rumple is far taller than me and far stronger, he stops after noticing that I'm no longer walking. Oh, princess, do you want to stop and admire the scenery? Why are you talking me through here? I do not care about Santa, and I do not care about walking around with you. Ah, oh, princess, your honesty really is a treasure. One day I will make it so you enjoy going places with me, not just holding my hand. What? I quickly slide my hand out of his. My face feels somewhat hot. Ah, oh, there's the sweet roses to your cheeks. You never answer my question. It's a detour. We were only going to be in here for a few minutes. If you thought you saw someone eyeing on you, it's better to drag their attention away from the Martian. And better you say it's dangerous. Yes, it is. But we still not far enough away from the town to worry about safety. And I believe I can protect you. Won't you accompany my clever way, sweet princess? He takes a step forward, bringing the short distance between us, and suddenly his fingers around my wrists again. 
but he does not learn his fingers through mine. Instead, he takes my hand and then pulls it up to his face. Before I realize, my hand is on his cheek and his hand clubbing on my own. Princess, you can trust me. Always. I mean, I can seriously what something. Sometimes you trust me. Sometimes you don't. But you do not need to be cautious around me. Show you with compliments because I believe you deserve them. I'll tell you that I enjoy being around you because I do. I should be forced on his words. Focus on his words, but all I can do is look at his eyes. Why do I need to do for you to fully trust me? Mark told me that people lie. So how can I trust that everything he says is true? Perhaps I need to stop throwing compliments at you. Huh? You would you would not be you without all those compliments. What am I saying? I always compliment about his compliments. Complain about his compliments, but the thought of rumble without compliments is, is strange. So you enjoy my compliments, sweet princess? No, I. What? Words have deceived you. I understand. Being so close to me would have effect on any woman. Something bright and anger fires up inside me. Something that I do not understand. I pull my hand away from him. I scrawl him on my face. Was my big mouth again, princess? Come on, let's get back to the Martian. I walk ahead and Rubble rushes to catch up to me. I clean my fingers and let out a sigh. slight sigh. Rubble was being nice to me again, but I reject his kindness because I cannot. it cannot be real. I do not believe you. I don't believe you, Rumble. You're lying to me. Days go by and the current Rumple is five, but I refuse to flirt with anyone again. But I have no idea how to make anyone happy. Rumple told me that I cannot make anyone happy without knowing anything about them and listen to them, like I did with Anne. But what reason do I have to listen to people? This is so frustrating. Days later, Rumpel and I sit at the table waiting for our work orders. Rumpel is on the third of conversation when you suddenly hear Perfil speaking in the doorway. Rumpel picks up on the words before I do and rush over to the front door. He looks almost nervous. Was who's at the front door? I excuse myself briefly, telling Anne that I will be back. I made my way to the front door and there are three people in our conversation. There's Rumpel in peripheral and a very pale man. The pale man looks like death itself. Like he'll just kneel over. I can help him. Rumpel. He needs help. He can stay in my room instead. I can restart the medicine on my own if need be. So please let me help him. There's a in, in Rumpel's eyes than I seen before. He looks perfectly plain, as willing to hold the man by the shore to steady him. What is happening? Oh, Princess, the man heard about Rumpel through one of the men at the tram. He's sick and does not have a lot of money to pay for treatment. He came here to seek Rumpel. He must have been able to find the place because he was cursed. Does he even have money to pay? Rumpel turns to me with a frown on his face. I've never seen him Look at me so stern. Princess, remember what I told you before. He insists that a doctor number would print was to help their patient, regardless of most situations. Take him to your room, and then Rumpel. I will have Anne assist you, if she's willing. No, Anne does not ha need to worry herself. I think she wants to help you. Two cut off their jam short when the man starts coughing. A terrible hawk cough, paralyzing him. Rumble stands, steadies him, and then he begins to slowly move him towards his room. Don't worry, princess, he'll be fine. What? I can see you're worried on your face. Rumble will be fine. Why would I be worried about Rumble? Because it's not like you to worry about someone you don't know at all. 
He looks so alarmed. I've never seen Rumpel look like that before. It's not like him at all. Rumpel knows what he's doing. I have someone else assisting you with serving today, so no worries. Perky comes through on her promise. When I go back to the bar, both Anne and Rumpel are gone. Karma or Miss Karma is there instead, looking disgusted. Walson would be better at this. Why do I have to help? Because Walson is busy doing his puppet show and Rumpel is helping a sick man. Oh, well I guess there's nothing about this, this then other than enjoy it. He flips his hair and smiles brightly. I will attend all the customers today. Perhaps we shall have custom, plenty of customers, princess. Comments with yourself. I am really not in the mood for karma right now. Then I shall gain confidence with myself. Because challenge yourself is important. Harm puts up waiting tables very easily. I know he speaks very far to the girls, but they are not as responsive as they were with Rumpel. Many times they ask him when Rumpel is where Rumpel is, and he seems out of him. When he tells them Rumpel is busy, they seem out of him. Once my break starts, I met Karma at the bar, and he looks disappointed. I guess if you were Rumpel, confidence to woo girls, he would win. Darling, if I were to shout my turn right now, I would be clearly victor. Since without a woman would flock to me, it, rather, it is rather uncomfortable to have every woman I fall in love with you. You look like you're judging me, princess, because I am. And only, if only you understand my plot. Karma and Rumpel may speak similar, but they're still so difficult. Karma is the type to complain. Rumpel never complains. Is he overworking himself for someone else, just like he went out for his way to apologize to me many times? My heart sinks a little bit as I think of him. Alice helped out a sick man. Rumpel did not want Alice going up there, so he probably wouldn't want me up there either. I could try to visit or go back to my room. Go visit Rumpel. I think I'll go check on him. Check on Rumpel? I couldn't realize I was speaking aloud. I look at Karma who frowned his eyes at me slightly. I honestly don't know how you could stand him as a partner. Why do you dislike him so much, Rumpel so much? Oh, you meant to be. Mm. A lot of things, Princess, but the fight is between us and does not involve you. Then you do not involve me. You have not turned on us being partners. Carmen looked at me wide-eyed and a little shocked. Then a sort of nod come in his eyes and smiles a little bit. Yes, I think I should go visit him, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get him off your mind, wouldn't you? He laughs a little bit before picking up his tray, rushing off to Cato's ship. I slowly manage my way upstairs, my feet feeling heavy. For some reason, I feel like Carmen was right. I made my way over to what I'm thinking is Rumpelstiltskin. The door is ajar, and I hear hushish voices between our side. The voice is definitely wrong to Anne and Rumpel. I slowly push the door open, quietly step inside. Rumpel and Anne are standing over the man, who is covered in blankets and coughing. Sarah Bell is set on the table close by. None of the herbs rows are working. We need a medicine for this. I'm sorry, but I don't have any more money to offer you, Rumpel. And please don't sound so sad. I already tried helping as much as possible. It's it's my fault for proposing to buy the medicine that we needed. I glance at the table where the list is sitting, because current we're handwriting and everything that friend needs you. Everything circles except for some medicine at the very bottom. Started next to the list is Rumpel's handwriting. Surely the two of them turn. They both look at me shocked. Princess, what are you doing here? I came to see how you were doing. Princess, I'm fine, but I glance at down the man. Alice sighs a bit. 
We give him what we can, but the only, the one medicine that we need is something we cannot afford. Even with the money I get from Lady Perfu, is it enough? I walked into my room, into the room, and glanced at the list. I look at the toll of the medicine, then at the coin on the table that I haven't noticed before. Did Rumble use all the money for this stranger? What will happen if you not get this medicine? Without this, then we'll spread, and he could. He goes silent as the man coughs again. I could read the answer in his eyes as if he wouldn't say. The man could be in terrible danger. He could even die. Rumble looks defeated. He does not look like himself at all. I glance at the coins again and then at the list. Without a second thought, I grab the ball, both the list and the coins. Princess, where are you? I'll be back. I left the room. Even Alice and Rumble crashed behind me. I made my way to my room where I picked up the bag of coins that the king gave me when I went to the palace the day I was cured. Then I head for the door. I may head for the medicine store. That we always run. I count the coins that I need to buy for the medicine. This will take all my money, but it wasn't if I was going to use it for something else. I rushed back to Martian with the medicine and a little bag, hoping this is the one Ruffle needs. It is dark by the time I get back to Martian. I made the way to Rumpel's room again and noticed he is sitting on a stove, the patient's bed, looking at him frightened. When I enter the room, his eyes go wry. He seems more surprised when I hand him the bag. Princess, this is... He opens the bag and little run ball he had. How did you buy this? I combined your toe with the money I had left over. Mom stares at me, clearly fragrant, then his expression moaned into something softer, something more refilling. He stepped forward and sliding his arms around me. He grabs me tight and then I hear his voice in my ear. Thank you so much, princess. My heart picks up slightly. It's loud. I think Rumple might hear it, but when he pulls away, he says nothing. I have to thank you for this later, Princess, but for now, you should leave. I don't want you to get sick. I'm too dazed to disagree. I nod and head move ship toward my door. I glance at Rumple one last time, knowing that he's checking the man's temperature. The moment I left the room, a flash of light in my heart, chess. I may touch the glass slipper at my necklace and then pause and as I stare down it. I felt a sudden glass and my lips nose of fire a second piece. A piece of the puzzle. I I got my first good deed. I bought the medicine for Rumble but only added a few more coins to buy it. So what did I do today? I was so current a good deed. I'm confused, but at the same time, I'm pleasured that I'd actually imagined to get a good deed. Now I only need two more. The next day, I go down to the Trout and Air, begin to work, but I am a little early. Austin is working on his puppets at the table. I am trying to see him, but I walk up to him. At he looks at me and smiles, then he raises an eyebrow. Princess, congratulations! You got your first good deed. I did. I knew you could do it. I know in response, his friend made me feel oddly proud. I could do my usual work, keeping an eye out for Rumpel as I worked my ship, but he never appeared. A few days go by, and it's only after the man leaves, looking at Hill, saying, Abel, that he was before I finally see Rumpel. He, has, he and the man spoke in the front door of Trell. No, really, sir, I cannot take anything from you. Nonsense, you saved my life. I need to pay you back somehow. I went and holding out money to Rumple, but Rumple just shakes his head. I notice that the dark circles around his eyes, the, that he looks tired. I didn't help you for money, but I insist. The money could be spent in better things, like your family. You may not take my money, but I promise I will pay you back. You heal. It's all a reward I need, I promise. I can't thank you enough. 
After a man leaves, I approach Rumble. He turns to me and leans against the door. He smiles, still tired, but brightly. Ah, oh, princess, come to heal my wearing body, perhaps? I would so love another hug. His face becomes hot at the mention of Rumble hugging the other day. Ah, Nessie Ruff, your cheeks is so sweet, princess. It makes me feel immediately better. And your necklace seems different. I reached up and touched the print. Every time I get a good deed, I pill and add it to my necklace. Oh, right. You helped me with the medicine the other day. Of course that was a good deed. Other day. It was very selfless of you. Thank you once again. This man tried to thank you too, but you refused his money. Why? And why did you spend your money on him? Because life is a vow, princess. No amount of money could ever be more patient than a person's life. Even if someone you do not know? Yes, because everyone has a life, princess. They have loved one fell sweethearts. If I could help them, I will. And I will go and spend any amount of money to do so. Okay, fine. But why did you not accept any money from that man? Because no amount of money. You need the money. How are you going to buy more medicine without any money? I put eyes wide. He clearly not expecting me to ask, ask that question. But he said before he didn't have much money. It was true. I cannot take money from what he does have much to begin with. He was thanking you with money. You should accept it. Her if you pays you, doesn't she not? Ruffle shrugged and shrugged when he sighed. Yes, even though I won't accept the money from her face to face, she has sneaked it into my wallet. If she does that, why not accept it from her? I'm trying to make sense, princess. And Peruvia does not seem to care because she sneaks the money into your wallet regardless. And you have a point there. You are stubborn. You, we are both. We both are. Now I have a question for you. Why did you use the money on that man? You were nothing about him. Did you, you do it for him or for yourself? Or for me perhaps? Rebel grins at mysteries. Even with the tired eyes I can see still see the bright cheerful in them. Hit the nail on the head again. You become easier to read, princess. Well, no matter why you did, thank you. The medicine was necessary to help that man. I still think you should have accept, think you should accept the money from him. You helped him and did as said no one else would. You should have accepted his gesture. Perhaps I told you. I cross my arms in front of him. You're so stubborn. Rumble smiles free as he looks at me sad, almost guilty. For some reason, the sight of him made my heart sink. I pop that from you look better with a smile. Rumble stares at me, shock. Why is he staring at me like that? You like my smile. What? I did not say I. You like my smile, and your confidence in it too. Princess, you have no idea how much this means to me. Rumple throws his hands in the air and urges to roll my eyes. The race, race. You get confidence all the time from women. Yes, but none as honest as you. The confidence is fake because I know you actually mean it. So I will keep those words close to my heart because they are precious to me. It is was nothing anything like a simple compliment he gave yet he's still so happy you seem to get along Profio appears behind us a smile on her face so sorry to interrupt but rose karma is slowly drawing drowning in the table work would you help him yes of course Rubble looked disappointed as I send back to the bar when Karma expressed to me and that I am back. Rumble returned to his room that day, and he is given the day off, both 
Dorian Perfume can see the tires on his face, just like I can. And I actually have to go because my battery's dying. Peace, guys!